Hey Ratbags, welcome to a 7 Days to Die preview of some of the new locations in the new 1.0 update. Today we're taking a look at the football field. It is a massive complex filled with some of the most dangerous zombies in the game. A tier 5 area with some outstanding loot as long as you're willing to go through the battle of taking on so many zombies. You're going to be dealing with demolishers, mutated zombies military, hazmat and of course more regular ones. You'll definitely need to bring an auger if you want to get inside one of the hardened loot cases and that's the main gist of the loot here. Lots of medical supplies as well as lots of military and plenty of shipping crates with shotgun parts and much more. There are five zones if you include the main building entranceway with over 50 to 60 zombies spawning. If you find this little preview useful, do leave a like, make sure you subscribe as I'm going to be covering 7 Days to Die again in a big way after years away from the game. Let's go. So the coordinates for this place are 266 West, 1814 North. Of course this only applies to the Nav G maps, any procedure generated ones might be different, but I would assume they'd still be in the cold or the north snowy areas as you might expect. Plenty of lumberjacks to clear out as well as regular zombies in the streets. There's two main ways to go through, depending on what you're after. You can actually follow the outside and on the left, and you'll simply have to go through a chain link fence to go ahead and get access to the major military loot. But of course, you will have to deal with the strongest zombies straight away. Otherwise, if you check all the doorways alongside the rest of the faculty, you'll realise they're all locked until you get onto the right-hand side of the building. Of course, you can go and break into any of the other doors, but this door was open as well as a big hole in the adjacent to it on the right. Plenty of thick freedom tributes on the flags also, and you'll basically be in the lockers. Nothing too crazy here other than just regular zombies to deal with. Obviously worth checking every nook and cranny to make sure there's no loot bags, and there's plenty of lockers to also go and loot. You'll find a few cubby holes where there's storage, and maybe some cleaning or extra resource supplies, but the main things you're looking out for here are the small tiny triage areas that have been set up, as this will give you a chance to get some medical supplies in the cabinets. It's repeated on the other side of the building. I'll bet you've now got a small cooking area as well. Well, I was lucky enough to find another cook pot. All in all, there was around 10 to maybe 12 zombies either directly inside this building or maybe came in from either the rooftops or maybe just slightly outside. But trust me, it's going to get a lot worse. So it is pretty much almost a mirror. You will find another small area with a triage and again, more medical supplies on the other side. And this is where we're gonna find a way onto the top of the rooftops and the main actual field. So on the opposite end of where you actually came in, again, more of the zombos, but a rope that will lead up to a hole and on top of the roof. So you can see the bleachers. I wouldn't advise going too far down. You may wanna try and clear out any of the zombies that are up here first. But look out for any noise attracting a whole ton of them that will come up the steps from the field. You're best off advised of being stealthy or making sure obviously you've got the right arsenal, which you should have with this being a tier 5 area. You don't really want to be doing this with nothing but a bow and an axe. Definitely some heavy duty weapons. All in all, again, there must have been another 10 to 12 zombies either on top of the seating area or that came attacking me as I started to make more noise. As soon as I started going over to the right hand side of the bleachers though, that's when I started getting attacked by all sorts more, including the vultures, and basically started to be rushed by a lot more. I of course was giving myself some decent gear before taking this on, this isn't a legit playthrough just yet, since 1.0 has only been out a day, but I did want to show you obviously what to expect. In the end I actually fell down and this ended up helping me because it meant all the zombies would break their legs momentarily giving me a chance to shoot them as they recovered. And it probably could be a wise idea to lead a lot of them out of the seating area just to make sure you can get more space and get more shots off. You may even draw the attention of some of the biohazard zombies that will be or floating near the medical part of the football field. And surely I don't have to tell you, try not to do this too close to night time like I am here. So it must be close to about 30 zombies at this point, but enough clearance to go in and start exploring the construction site just outside the field. Obviously looking out for any construction crates that you can demolish to hopefully get some of the resources inside. And plenty of loot containers in each of the nooks and crannies. So exploring the military zone at the right hand side of all the tents, this is where you're going to find a bunch of medicinal gear. 
maybe a zombie or two inside the chain link enclosures, and look out for some Shamway sealed shipping crates too. It's not my brightest idea, but as night was falling, I was starting to get attacked more and more by zombies, and of course they were getting a bit speedier now, as well as a spider zombie. So I skipped time just to show it all off in the daytime so you could see exactly what was going on. But yeah, small extra lootable areas inside the tents, but outside is where you've got to be careful as there'll be a bunch of hazmat ones that will pop out from this area. If it all gets a bit too much, you can jump in top of the crow's nest. There is three of these dotted around the complex, give you a little bit of bird's eye view, and of course take care of any zombies that might be chasing you up the ladder. So I was surprised not to see any zombie doggos here, since there were some kennels obviously, but this way you might come across a few military zombies now too. The loot inside the little port cabin was pretty lacklustre, with no extra storage crates or anything really worthy of note. At best you'll get a lot of supplies from taking on the data centres with a good wrench. As I stepped out on the other side, this is when I started getting attacked by some of the military ones. I do recommend doing this. You could absolutely, as I said, lead a bunch of them out from the chain link fence near to where you're going to have to get the most of the military loot, but it does come with the worst zombies going, which we'll talk about in a second. If you've got the ammo, the firepower and the patience, it's better to take it a bit slowly and clear off each section. So into the main graveyard area, where obviously they were trying to get rid of all the infected. Do pay attention to the barrels, they're going to come in handy for trying to do some more damage against a zombie swarm that's about to attack you. As you get closer to the truck, you'll find a whole ton of hazmat zombies will break out. You can try jumping on top of the truck, but be warned the floor is pretty weak. And yes, you will have a ton of burners appear from nowhere, as well as some of the mutated zombos. Not going to lie, I wasn't expecting this amount or this variation of them, so I did make a quick hasty retreat trying to get some distance, but with so many of them attacking, yeah, it definitely want to be bringing more firepower. In the end, the same trick that I applied to the ones that followed me outside the entrance, having them fall down and pretty much give me a few vital seconds to get some more shots in. Sure, you could lead more of them outside, hopefully to where you might have some traps, that might be a better way to take them down if you haven't got that much advanced power. And just absolutely make sure you're shooting the barrels well ahead of time to help them take them out. I did end up going into one of the bird boxes towers to help me try and get rid of them because there just simply were too many. So with that main horde coming for me, there weren't too many left in and around the area, just maybe a couple of scorch that would randomly spawn. But the full danger is still there as we've got to go and explore the port cabin which has got all the military grade loot inside. Thankfully there's a switch to go ahead and open the door but be warned more military guys will pop out, including a demolisher also. Once they were taken care of, a ton of military loot, weapon and equipment racks as well and plenty of shipping crates with shotgun stuff and more. There was a hardened crate with another two shipping crates so if you've got one, you might want to bring your auger, as it's going to be 10,000 damage that you'll need to apply to get this hard and great open. But certainly worth it, given the amount of loot inside. So there we go, a formidable place to come. Absolutely, as I said, going through that chain link on the left-hand side is maybe the quickest and easiest way, but you will obviously activate a ton of the swarm coming at you earlier. Having them all out in the open, chasing around the rest of the town is probably not the best or wisest of ideas. I think it is better to just go stage through stage, clearing them out as you go. But a cool area, definitely a cool little dungeon. Absolutely looking forward to seeing what's more in the new POIs. I'll be showcasing each and every one of them, hopefully as much as I can. So until next time, Rutbags, I'll catch you later.